In this DaVinci Resolve tutorial, I'm gonna teach you how to do speed ramp transitions. It's a really cool effect where one clip transitions into another clip by doing a very fast speed ramp zoom, and it looks professional and it grabs your attention. If you're new here, we have over 200 videography related videos, so lots of content for you to learn from. And if you wanna know any of the music or the gear we use to make our videos, all links are in the description. Let's jump in. All right, let's bring our footage down into our timeline. And to show you what we are working with, we have a clip I filmed in Iceland. And basically the drone goes toward the waterfall and then it starts to uh, tilt down to the top of the waterfall. And then the other clip is a close up of the waterfall and it sort of slowly pans um, as the drone moves. And to create a speed ramp transition, there's essentially two parts. So the first part is doing the actual speed ramp where you increase time and make the clip go fast all of a sudden. And then the second part is the actual transition. So let's go ahead and duplicate those. I just selected them and then held option or alt on the PC and then dragged up. And we'll go over to right before the drone starts to go up and we'll trim that. And then we will ripple delete these. If you don't know how to do that, you just click in between where there's no clips and then hit delete on your keyboard. And then we'll do the same for this. All right, we will ignore this one for now and we'll do our full effect and then we'll revisit this where it has no effects at the end. So let's right click our first clip, go up to re-time controls. We'll do the same on the second clip. And then on the first clip, we want the last about 80% or so to uh, be the faster part where it speeds up and transitions into that second clip. So at the beginning, let's save about three seconds. Okay, that's approximately three seconds. And then from there, we will click the uh, drop down arrow. We will add a speed point. And then we'll go up here to where it says keyframes. We'll click on that option that opens up the keyframe window. And then down here on the left, we want to click on this little curve line. It's subtle, but you can see that when you click on it, it is highlighted just like the ones up at the top. And that will allow us to do the actual speed ramping. But if you notice, let's go to the uh, undocked window and we aren't seeing anything here. So the reason for that is we wanna go down and actually make a time change so that we have something to work with. And since the last 80% or so is what we are trying to uh, speed up, I like to get a head start by right clicking and then going to speed change and just choosing sort of the last option. And then that makes this section super fast. And therefore, when we go back up to here, now you can see we actually have a keyframe and a line at the top. And this may look like a whole lot of nothing to you, but uh, let me try to explain it. The numbers on the side here represent time. So at the beginning of the clip, it's at one. This represents 100%. That means it is playing back in real time. There are no time changes. And then right at this spot here, there is an instant change from one frame over to the next frame up to 800%. This is just a speed change. There is no speed ramping yet. To get speed ramping, we'll select our keyframe and then we'll go up to our ease in, ease out. And then now we actually have a speed ramp where over time goes from 100% to 150, 180, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, all the way up to our 800%. And if we want, we can exaggerate that by dragging it out a bit. And then we'll uh, click on the X, go back to here, and we'll have a look at that. All right, it's doing what we want it to do, but it's pretty slow. So let's go back up to our window here. And this time, right on the flat section of the spot that we set to 800, let's raise it so it's more like 6,000% or something like that. And as we're clicking and dragging and increasing the speed, you might find that you hit sort of a limit. If you do, you can go to the three dots and click on the auto zoom graphite. And then that will allow you to go up a bit, but again, it might mess things up. 
So you'll just have to sort of come back here to auto zoom and then it will uh, kind of reset for you. Okay, so 5,000% there, uh, we'll try that for now. And let's have a look. And now you can see it starts off at regular speed and then ramps off very quickly. That is what our goal is. So let's bring this clip over. And then we'll do kind of the same thing. So we have our read time controls enabled. We'll do the first about 80% sped up and we'll leave about three seconds again. And that number is arbitrary for you. It could be, you know, 10 seconds or five seconds, whatever you decide. We'll go ahead and add a speed point. And then once again, we'll set it up by getting it to 800. We'll double check to make sure that the curve is selected and then expand the window. We'll highlight our keyframe, convert it to a ramp, expand it out. And then once again, we will raise this up by quite a bit. Okay, we'll try something like that. We'll go back and maybe just a little less, so I'll undo twice. And maybe we'll do just a little more actually. And with that, we now have our speed ramp selected on the first clip and the second clip. However, we haven't done any zooming yet, which is sort of the part that uh, marries the two clips together a little better and helps with the transition. On the first clip, since it's going into the second clip, it's leading into it, we will add a keyframe right where the speed ramp starts. So we'll go up to our inspector, inside transform and under zoom we will add a keyframe and then we'll go to the end of our clip the last frame and we will zoom in quite a bit maybe like 2.2 and then on our second clip we will start at one and then we want to continue that zoom into our second clip at the end of the uh, speed ramp it's about 20 percent zoom All right, we will watch our clip now. I think we can lose maybe a little bit of the second clip. We'll try the same on the first clip. Maybe we will reduce the zoom so that it is less dramatic. and we'll zoom in more on the second clip instead. And one more time, let's play this back. So it's a lot more dynamic and with the zoom, it sort of helps the transition and it feels a little more like it makes sense. Now let's go to the just straight jump cut. Now, of course, there is nothing here. This is perfectly fine. I would even go as far as saying in certain types of projects, the straight cut will uh, work a lot better because the zoom transition can be a little bit jarring. And if you're working on a project that's more of like a documentary or more serious, I wouldn't suggest doing any zoom transitions or, you know, any sort of heavy effects. In that case, you'd want to just stick to like straight cuts. But if you're doing like music videos or more creative projects, but these zoom style transitions and speed ramp effects can add quite a bit of excitement to your end edit. And it's always good to know both methods. Again, everything is just art when it comes to uh, video production. So there's no right or wrong way. Some people might choose just the straight cut and some people might choose more of like a dynamic zoom. Okay, that's it for this video on how to speed ramp transition inside Resolve. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to see more videos from us in the future. We have over 200 videography related videos, so lots of content for you to learn from. And if you wanna know the music or the gear we use to make our videos, all links are in the description. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.